Oh, hello, my beautiful creative friends. I'm so happy to be here. I know it's been a long time, but I'm really, really happy to be here. And today I want to uh, explore one of the most uh, versatile products that create color that I consume. I mean, besides acrylic paints, okay, yes, acrylic paints are versatile, but these are even more versatile. And I'm going to show you a few really cool techniques and how to do it. And of course, I am talking about the Lindy's Magical Powders. They are just so amazing. And they come in powder, but they're highly pigmented dyes that you can basically use as is or mix into things. And, oh, I see some people. Hey, hey, Terry. Hey, Kira, Kira or Kyra. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, if I butcher your names, please don't like, um, don't hold it against me. Uh, but I'm just so happy you guys are here. And the reason why I'm actually doing this today is because um, I am, again, part of the Craftmaker Success Summit, which is a free uh, summit, card making summit, and I'm really excited that it's being hosted again this year. And I'm one of the uh, one of the speakers, and I'm going to be working with the the magicals. And because I'm working with this really cool technique with magicals, I wanted to show you what else you can do with them. So that way, in case you get the magicals or you do you do you, you know you do the class, even if you do it for free or you have, if you upgrade you can actually like do it yourself and i'll show you so many more techniques today the link is in the description so you can just grab the link for the free summit you can sign up for it and of course if you want to upgrade to the um, if you want to upgrade to the vip pass which is like an all access pass that you get to keep all the classes for as long as you need and you can watch them at your own pace uh, there's a very special price when you click that link. It will give you a special price on the spot there. And that's not organized by me. Uh, I'm just one of the participants. I see here. Oh, hi, Michael. That's so nice to see you here. And I see Janine. Um, I'm just really uh, happy to see you all from Winnipeg. I'm also I'm in Toronto. Like, so yes, Canada. So that's excited. Well, suburbs of Toronto, I would say. So let me just like change the camera around because I want to I want you to really see what I'm doing um it is um you don't want to see my face all the time <laughs> um oh your name is Chuck in Spanish Tish yeah, that's Tisa yeah okay that's funny I speak Spanish so that would be Tisa but Tisa is spelled with a z so that's okay um that is a little bit different so uh, I thought Tisa was paid with a Z, but anyways, I am excited and I want to show you all the cool techniques you can do with the magicals and um, and just like really get you like excited about this. I also, I'm sorry, I forgot to say, I'm going to put the link also besides in, beside the fact that it's in the in the chat, sorry, in the description, I'm also going to put it here. There is the link for the free summit that you can sign up. So that is there. Okay, so make sure that you are you you come and watch my class and watch all the classes. There's about like almost 50 people this time. So there's a lot of really cool classes. I like um, although oh, and I'm gonna show you my cards also before anything. So these are the cards. Um, these are all made with magical powders, and um, um, it's basically like um, just really nice and I made a huge panel that I cut out into four by four and these are the cards that I make and the res the the card sorry the technique that I'm going to be making is a resist technique with magicals if you don't have magicals you can use watercolors as well during the class uh, let's say you order them and they haven't come in or you or you are just you know you don't want to spend in another product don't worry you can do the same technique with watercolors so that is okay and I also have this, which is a freebie that I'm giving during the class, whether you do it for free or you sign up for the VIP, you get this free downloadable thank you uh, sheet that you can actually access and download and use for the, for the cards. But today I'm not gonna be making any cards. I just want to kind of have this relaxed card where um, relaxed, um, how do you call this? I want to have this relaxed class. So that's what I meant to say, where we're just exploring and having fun and not worrying about like creating a full project. What's important to me is like just kind of um, 
teaching you how to explore things, how to just create things. And this is where the magicals, the magic of magicals come in. Now, magicals come in two different types. They come in the shimmery type, which I'll show you. They have like a lot of like really like you can actually see the glitter. I think you can see the glitter. I mean, I'm trying to like um, see I'm a bit. I don't know if it's lagging or not, but you can see like they're a little bit shiny. And then you have the, um, the flat ones, which are basically they're called flat magicals. They don't have any shimmer in there. They're just a flat color of the pigment. So you will not see like any shimmer inside of them, but the pigment is pretty strong, which is great. So I'm just, and the other thing I want to do, I like doing is I like putting the lid with the thing. Otherwise, I get confused about which one it is. And they have really cool names. Some of them are called, uh, this one is called Time Traveling Teal. And this one is called Just Be Kind Cobalt. So I, as you might see, I like a lot of uh, blues and purples, magenta, green. So yeah, all of those are fun. This is Martian magenta. So that's I really like as well. They also come in something called a magical shaker. And what I like about that is that um, you can shake the powder. These are old shakers. They actually have some new versions of the shakers. And I really like um, uh, the, um, the basically the way that they, they, they shake on the page. But if you don't have the shakers, you can always use like what I have here, which are these brushes, okay? So let me just open a couple more. Um, really fun colors this is called so one of the designers her name is nuneka and she also designed some colors for them so nuneka's purple popsicle oh that looks really nice i have not used this one yet so i'm going to be testing things same as you and i'm reading the colors here so you can zoom in and if you need to see anything you can this one is called dip a toe teal i mean they all come in either set so you can buy them in uh, some of them you can buy singles but um yeah, so just let me start with these colors. I don't want to put too many colors because then I'm going to get you all confused. So there's a couple of ways of working with the magicals. And oh, before I start, I want to show you what paper I'm using. So there's different papers that you can use. I love two different kinds. One is the Bristol Smooth uh, paper. The, this one, Canson makes it and also Stratmore makes it. So either one of those is good. I actually cut, uh, this is a nine by 12 inch and I cut them into panels just to show you. Another paper I really like, it's not paper surface, I meant to say, it's the watercolor. Um, it has to be like a, a very thick watercolor. So 140 pounds, 300 or 300 grams per, I don't know what it's, GSM, GSM, I don't know. So this is a four by eight uh, inch. And I also have one of these. I like this one because it's a really nice panel book, but they come in bigger sheets as well. So in order to show you like what can be done with this, one of the first things that I like doing is that I like um, kind of testing different things. So for example, let's try this one because I really wanted to try this purple one. So I'm going to dip my brush into it a little bit. And I'm going to sprinkle some powder here. Then I can also dip it into another color and dip in and sprinkle here. Now what the what it does is that it adds the powder onto the background. And then using a spray bottle, I can just activate it. And it creates these really cool effects that you can see here. I really like this type of effect. It's really nice to kind of combine them. Uh, the powders have different colors in them, different pigment colors in them. So it really helps to, um, how do you call this? To like sprinkle them because you can get those different colors. The more water you add, the more diluted the color will be. So therefore you will lose some of the color of the pigments because everything mixes together. Now to show you, for example, the flat version. So this is uh, the flat version. I'm going to go in this side, okay? So you can't really tell right now that it's um, uh, that it's uh, shimmery, but as soon as it dries, you will really notice the shimmer. So again, I'm going to go, and this is probably a darker color, as you can see. Of course, it also depends on how much you add. The more you add, the more color you're going to get. Now you can combine colors. So for example, you can go ahead and um, let's see, let's add some magenta onto the blue. 
and it will probably turn into like a purplish color, okay? So you can add this as well. Um, another way that I love using these, and this is just like basically, this is the basic ways to use them, is, um, is to just like wet my paintbrush. And sometimes I just go on like the edges here. I pick up some and I just paint. And sometimes you wanna get that really nice effect of just painting because they are like, they do have the properties of watercolor in the sense that they're liquidy and anything that you would use watercolor for, you can actually use magicals for. Um, so for example, because they're watercolor, they're water resistance, they will resist anything that is um, oil-based. So for example, things like wax or crayons, or um, you can do embossing powder, and heat it up and then they, you can create really really nice effects so that's basically what has been done in these cards so these cards i created um, a really nice kind of star looking background but at the same time uh, it was i used some resist effects uh, using crayons and you will see in the class that i was that i announced before the class really um, helps you because I, I take you everything step by step so you actually finish a project instead of just having to play right now. But anything that I show you here today, you can actually use with the magicals and you can use for any type of background, whether it is cards, whether it is art journals, canvases, um, if you're making, um, I don't know, like tags or like bookmarks, I've made really nice bookmarks with them. So. I mean, basically anything goes and you can just like play around with them. So you can see that I can actually paint as if it was watercolor or leave it the way it is. So you know what I mean? And you can you can use different, different uh, pieces of, um, sorry, you can use different colors to mix them together, right? And sometimes I do lose my train of thought. Um, uh, so, so okay, so somebody's asking about the color bursts uh, powder. So yeah, these are very similar to that. So there's different companies that create these. I love the magicals because they're actually shimmery. That's one of the reasons why I love them. But you can definitely do the same thing with color bursts. I think uh, Nouveau, uh, not Nouveau, what is that company called? Tonic Studios makes something similar. Of course, brushos are um, definitely like this. This so far, I've tried quite a few different ones. I've tried uh, color bursts and I've tried um, brush shows and other ones. And definitely, these are by far my favorite. And I can't wait. I'm actually gonna get soon. I'm um, buying the new shakers, like not the old ones, but the new versions, to see how to test them out because I really like kind of shaking it on top. Now I'm gonna leave this one kind of like this, and I'm gonna let it sit and uh, to dry on the side. I want to kind of show you that you can see, um, um, so you can see like the, um, the difference between how I did the panel, okay? So this is one panel and I'm gonna let it dry. You can definitely heat set it with a uh, heat tool, but right now it, I don't need to do that because I'm gonna be showing you a lot of techniques with it. Um, so as, um, as, um, Oh, I didn't realize that the, the color burst comes shimmery. So that makes sense, yeah. And as Terry said, they do come in two, like the flat ones that I showed you and the shimmery, and you can combine the two and it looks really, really nice. Um, another one of the things that I love doing is I love um, actually combining things with the magicals. You can mix them into almost anything. Uh, so for example, let me take a new paper. I'm gonna still use this paper. This is still the same kind. You can mix them with something like modeling paste, okay? So for example, I'm going to um, uh, grab like a stencil and I've put all the links to all the, all the links to all the products below. Uh, but just so you know, if you do click the link for the Lindy's Magicals that I put in the description, you get 10% off to buy them. So if you do want them, that is something that you can do as well. And I do recommend the ones that are sprinkling, if you can, like the shakers, just because like then you get to use them two different ways. Now I do have some stencils I wanna use here and uh, maybe I'll use this one. I like this one. These are my stencil designs that I, uh, that I designed for joggles. So um, 
yeah, I really liked, I really liked the design. So what I'm going to do is actually first I'm going to add modeling paste just on its own. I want to show you how the um, how it works to have the magicals go through the modeling paste. And if you don't have modeling paste, you can definitely use uh, like a thick gesso or some kind of texture paste, whatever you have. Like um, it's basically like um, like it's experimenting and having fun with them. So whatever you have on hand, that's what you can use. But I do want to show you. So I'm going to just use modeling paste. This is one of my favorite techniques. I love uh, adding 3D effects to things. And I'm just going to slowly do this first. And the reason why I'm doing this like this first is because modeling paste takes a little bit longer to dry. So I want to have this panel ready for afterwards. So first I'm just kind of creating the modeling paste and I'm gonna set this to dry. So if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. I do have um, uh, Elaine as a moderator and there's a lot of people that I've been friends with for years and they have answers for everything as well. So they could probably answer it if you if you have new to magicals or new to mixed media or anything like that. Uh, so um, what is important to do is I'm going to lift this and I'm going to leave it kind of like that. I just want to, that would look like a really cool card. Okay, so there is the design. I'm gonna let this dry just up here on the side. And as always, make sure that when you're using modeling paste, um, you actually clean up the stencil really well. I'm just using a baby wipe, but you can if, you can rinse it also under afterwards with something. I am known to always forgetting a bin to put beside me when I'm creating. I have a lot of friends who always put a bin with water beside them. So they are always ready while I'm always cleaning things. So um, can you, okay, so uh, Tisa is asking if you can use gesso or just acrylic if you don't have texture paste. Yes, definitely. So you could actually, if you have like a heavy gesso or acrylic paint, it has to be heavy obviously, so it can go through the stencil. Or even not, even if you're just pouncing it, yes, definitely you can use acrylic. Anything, um, anything that will give you that raised, um, that raised feeling, that would be just perfect as well. So yes, you can definitely do that. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, for example, I can show you even. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple things. So here is like I have a gel medium. You can even mix it with that. So anything goes. Uh, uh, the powder will, so this is asking, will the powder go over it? Can you explain what you mean? Like, do you mean it will, will it resist, resist it or not? It, it depends, like how dark the paint is. So for example, the powder will actually go over it, but it will probably resist it, same as like the modeling paste. Um, so you will soon see what I do with the modeling paste, but the color still stays on the modeling paste and will probably still stay. So if the if the, if the gesso is white or the paint is white, you will probably uh, get color on it. It doesn't fully resist the way like the technique that I'm doing in the card class where it fully resists the, the watercolors, I mean the, the magicals. Uh, with gesso or with modeling paste or even with the gel, you will not see a full resist. The only thing that fully resists is embossing powder. It's not a something that I'm doing today just because there is just too many too much information I don't want to overwhelm you with information okay so you will not see me doing that but I do want to show you um, something cool with this so another way that you can do use the powders is you can mix them with things so I'm going to grab a little bit of modeling paste okay just this is the second way that I love doing it and this time I'm using the watercolor paper just because I don't know, just because I grabbed it, it will work on anything, okay? And let's see, let's, uh, I'm going to mix here on the side, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little spoon and where did I put it? Yes, I have these little spoons. It's really important to have a little spoon like this because otherwise you make a mess, you mess of everything. So again, I'm going with the purples and you're gonna add a little bit of purple here onto the mixture. Now you could do this in a container and then keep it for like a long time. So as long as it's sealed and airtight and you can make your own 
colors. You could also like, I'll show you in a second, I'm gonna mix it with some gel medium and kind of make your own paints. So I've made my own paints out of them um, and it's really, really cool. Now I'm gonna move this one just because it's, it's in my space, hold on. Um, so this is cool. You see how it made like a really nice purple? Okay, look how pretty that is. And I'm gonna grab another stencil. Uh, maybe, let's see, I'm gonna grab this one. I like this one. And, and just, just for testing purposes, okay, I, I didn't make a lot of paste. I just wanted to make a little bit so you can see it. And you know what, maybe I will just um, kind of just do this little piece here. And I'll show you the gel medium at the top, okay? So, um, yeah, so there's just really nice, like I really love this because of the versatility that you could make your own paints out of it. So it's just really brilliant in that sense. Um, uh, so just as again, I just made a little bit just to show you kind of the design. You can make more, of course, if you, if you need to, you can make a big amount and just keep it in a container. And, um, and why it was important for me to show you how versatile everything is, how these powders are so versatile is because I, I don't enjoy telling people to buy things, okay? I, it's very hard for me to have people uh, say, you know what, these are the best powders, you should buy them. And then at the same time, not show you like that you can do so many things with them. So it's kind of um, a pet peeve of mine to have only one usage for something where I could easily show you so many things you can do with this with these powders and then not have don't not have you like feel like you wasted money. Like if you can see what um oh my gosh, I just it's been such a long time since since I've been in Celtic pheasant peasant, which is like um, somebody I should have known her name. I feel really uncomfortable that I didn't, but you know what, it's been such a long time that I've gone live. But what she said about how she bought color bursts and haven't used them, it's exactly that reason because you buy something and you really want to be able to have a reason to use it. You want to have not one reason, you want to have a thousand reasons to use it. So for that matter to actually, Zoe, Zoe, oh my God, yes, Zoe. Yes, I knew it was you. <laughs> Zoe, I'm so silly. I'm so sorry. I would sometimes I feel like names um uh, like and Zoe, yes, I uh, of course it's you. Like once I know what your name, I know who it is and I can relate to everywhere over you are. But what the point of it is is that it really bothers me that um there is all these products and there's like, you know, people just show you one way to use it. Like for example, if you went and just did my card class, uh, my uh, you did my card class and you just saw this one technique of resist technique, you're like, oh, wait, I mean, for I'm not buying these powders just for one technique. It's not worth it, right? That's why I did this class today because I want to show you that there is so many different types of techniques that you can do and that it's worth to sometimes purchase a product because you can experiment and do things with them as well, okay? So that is uh, how I combat or how I do things with my pet peeves of this, <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, I have this color that I really want to try out. It's called Gnome Berry Bordeaux. I don't know, it looks really cool. So let's try it. Oh, I look at this one. It's like a very, very, um, um, probably looks like a coppery or something. But just to show you that we can do it also with the gel medium, it will look a little bit different. Um, I'm going to show it to you. I'm gonna mix. Let's mix here. So again, I go with the flow. If I think that I'm gonna do something, I will just, um, I just find ways to try them and yeah. So this is gonna be a little bit more of a smooth, oops, maybe that's too much. A smooth surface, a smooth, uh, because it's gel, it's a little bit different. And what I like about it is that um, it kind of becomes like paint. You can use it like paint and I'm gonna show you that you can use that as paint, but let me mix it first. So you can, as I say, you can use it through a stencil. This is a, a little bit of a thicker gel. So, um, so it also, you could use it through a stencil, but if you use a liquid a gel, so for example, something like, 
the liquid acrylic medium, the matte medium, if you mixed it with the color, you're actually going to get uh, a more liquidy kind of consistency, kind of like a paint. Now, having said that, um, just so you know the difference is that if you're mixing it with gel, you're going to get the true color of how this is mixing because the gel is transparent. So if you're going to mix it with gesso, with white gesso, then the difference is that you're going to end up uh, making the diluting the color a little bit because white obviously makes things lighter. OK, so just to show you, I'm going to OK, you can use it like this. That's like what I meant by like you can use it like just to create texture. And I just wanted to clean my thing and I'm going to show you up with a with a paintbrush as well. So let me just grab a paintbrush. So I have a paintbrush and I can just grab it and paint with it. OK, so you let's say you because it's shimmery. Well, because some of them are shimmery. So if you, for example, wanted to cover a canvas uh, or like um, if you if you're working with a how do you call it, molds and stuff like that, then you can easily. Cover the cover this on top okay so you, you might want to you might need to put gesso underneath or not depending on what you're working on some some things some surfaces are really easy to create on and some you might need to prep with prime and you will learn like which ones the whole point of this is that what i always say is that you want to experiment to be able to kind of get the the right uh effect that you want to get so there we go. I'm just showing you two effects. I mean, I could cut this in half and show you things. Um, so and then make sure you wash this really well. So as I wanted to show, uh, as I wanted to say, for example, let's go back to let's go back to this one. OK, so this one is basically already dry and I can grab something like. This this stencil, which is also mine. OK, and just so I don't waste anything. I can use this as well. So as I said, you could use this also as, um, how do you call this, as a paste. So, so many different, um, how do you call this, so many different techniques can be done with these. And that's, as I said, the reason why I wanted to do this and show you, because if you're gonna join the, the card maker success summit, which is that free summit, or even if you're going to pay for it, because when you when you actually pay for the uh, for the summit, not only do you get almost all of the 50 um, uh, classes, but you also get a lot of bonuses. So there's an extra class for me there as well. And a lot of people offer different extra things. So it's really worth it. And it's it, I think it costs like forty dollars. So I mean, I mean, US dollars, but it's $40 uh, if you buy it right away when you click the link. So it's worth it in that sense. If you want, if you're a card maker, or even if you're not card maker, honestly, like a lot of people, like uh, you can like, don't have to watch every single thing. You can kind of choose which one to buy. Um, so, so in that sense, you could actually uh, watch the ones that interest you. Right. So and you can apply a lot of the techniques that people use onto like anything that you do, whether it is uh, whether it is card making or it is art journaling and so forth. I mean, I do a variety of things. So in that sense, I like that. So here it is. Look, and it's really shimmery, honestly, really, really shimmery. So I'm trying to let's see how far I can I get this up. OK, so this is another example of something you can do. Now, let me show you one more thing that you can do, which is basically one of my favorites, just saying, OK, so. You can make your own spray. Now, Lindis comes with uh, their own sprays, so each of those colors also have sprays that go with them. However, if you don't want to buy both the sprays and these, you could actually go and create your own sprays so now this might look green but it's not i just cleaned the bottle and i think there was green before but i needed to reuse it to show you so now i have to think what color do i want to make it's i get like i'm like oh there's so many nice colors and i think i've already made i'll show you i already made a purple before and i think i made a kind of like a bluish teal 
So let's go with maybe some green, okay? Just because I want to try something else, okay? So the key, this might look yellow, but it's actually, it's called Alien Goo Green. So again, now the key is not knowing exactly how much you need to put in order to make the spray strong enough. So I start with a little bit, test it, and then see if it's, if the spray, so the, obviously the more powder you use, the more pigment you use, the, the stronger the spray is going to be. I usually add about two and, um, and test it first. So you want to make sure you have a bottle that uh, you can mix well, as you know, with sprays, with any type of spray, never shake up and down, always shake sideways. So that way you don't get it stuck, especially something that has um, mica powder, like a powder in it. You don't want it to get stuck inside, okay? You don't want the powder to kind of go up the spout. So here we go. So let's test it first, see how it works. Is that strong enough? Mm, I don't particularly think it's that strong, but it's very shimmery, but I don't feel it's strong enough. So I might uh, add some more. And the nice thing about it is you could even mix colors together if you really are adventurous, okay? Even with, even if you do it with, um, uh, like if you're doing it with the modeling paste, you can also mix colors. Now, the thing with these powders, honestly, even though I've used them for so many things, they last you forever. I've had the same powders forever and ever and ever. I still have not finished one of the powders. Even though it looks like a little small jar, honestly, I've never finished and I've used them so much. So just so you know. Um, okay, let's see if this is better. Let's see if, oh, and now the color really comes out. Okay, so interesting. Oh, I think this green actually was from before because this is supposed to be more the color. Oh, like how pretty is that? Wow, okay. So I really like this. This is the perfect thing. And then I can show you, for example, that you could use it also through a stencil. So the same way you use sprays, um, let's see, let's use, oh, I like this. Okay, I like this stencil. It's also a really nice stencil. Um, so I'm going to show you how to like use it with this green. You wanna hold it further up a little bit. Okay, and there. Oh, the stencil was a bit dirty, okay? Don't, don't blame the, the colors, it's a stencil. So I also made a purple one, for example. So let me show you. Let's let's just kind of like, wait, before I do that, let me kind of dry it a little bit. So you can use like something like a paper towel just to kind of dab some of it out. Okay, so that way, and then use the paper towel as well. Okay, so there's lots of options. Okay, let me put this again on this. I'm gonna put this on the other side. And let me hold this tight and let's make some purple. Oh, the purple might not have enough purplish in it. No, nope, the purple did not have enough in it. Okay, so that happens. And I think some of it was dirty. Sorry, so let me just, um, did not like that effect, <laughs> but that happens. Um, uh, sorry, uh, I mixed Molly, uh, did I, I mixed it with water, but uh, I would, say you can mix with alcohol there's no reason why you can't and would that become alcoholing actually i've never tried that that is such a good idea so silly you know like you would think that i would try something like that but i haven't so yeah <laughs> so let me see you know what i'm gonna add a little bit more purple here i feel like it's not the right purple but do i care if it gets mixed up no okay Hold on, let me add a little bit more purple. I'm just adding like two, like I think it's a different purple in here, but it's okay because purple is purple. And let me turn it around so I can actually test it. See, when I did it, it looks like really pretty, but I think it's still light. I think I put too much water in this one. So I usually like, so for example, for this one, I ended up only putting half the, half the bottle like half uh, water in half of the bottle that way um uh like i, I it becomes more pigmented okay so that's the reasoning but the purple still looks nice so if you like a lighter color 
you can do that as well. Let me just um, do it. Like, obviously, if you're going to, sorry, I'm just going to clean this so I can start again. Obviously, if you're going to buy their sprays, you're going to get um, a better result in the sense of like they're more pigmented. Otherwise, you need to get a lot more, um, and you need to put a lot more powder in it. Okay, so that's the that's the key to it. Let me just like grab another stencil so I can like go and use. Maybe I'll use this for this one. And let me mix it a bit. I think I did teal, outer space aqua, or time traveling teal might have been. So let's now. Okay, there we go. That gives you a better effect of what, there you go. So now you can see the effect of the stencil. Of course, you're getting um, a very a watered down effect because that's what happens with sprays, right? So you're going to get that sprayed effect with the stencils. And this is really, really wet. So that's why you're getting it like this. You're seeing it like this. But let me go back now and show you what happened with the with the modeling paste that I had originally put here. And I'm just going to check that it's fully dry. So I'm gonna turn on the dryer for a second um, just to, um, to make sure that it's fully dry. You wanna make sure with any type of uh, paste or gel or anything, gesso, paint, that uh, it's fully dry. So in the meantime, let me just uh, say again that if you do want to join the live class, um, you can do that. Uh, sorry, not the live class. If you want to join the, the summit, the free summit, it's running between March 7th and March 10th. So every the way it works is that every day you get a few classes released. So this is how it's free. So you have to watch it, those classes within those days. So I am going live on March 7th, uh, uh, and I'm going to be just presenting my class, and you can ask any questions on the Stamp Me Some Love channel. But my class also goes live that way, that day. And you have 24 hours to watch my class and any class that was released on that day. Then you go into March 8th. And again, the same class, the next few 10 classes get released. And like that, it happens like that every single day. So you do, if you want to watch some free classes, um, you get to watch them only on those 24 hours, unless you upgrade for $40 and then you get all the classes included in your price okay so that's why sometimes people have preferred to sign up for the, the the all access pass because not only do you get all the classes but you also get other things as well with it um so okay so now um oh thank you yes that's the link elaine just posted the link for the free class thank you so much elaine uh so now um not the free class i keep on saying free class. free summit it's not a class my class is free there but there's also like I don't know, 40 something other classes. Now, with the, when you have the this already dry, you can do so many things with them. You can actually spray, okay? And this is when you asked me the question, Tisa, before, this is when you asked me the question, okay? Will, will it resist it or not? So this is modeling paste, but a similar thing will happen to using acrylic paint or anything like that, okay? So what you're gonna get is you're gonna, the color is going to go in between the design but you're also going to get it on top. You could use something like um, a baby wipe and kind of dab it out, but you also then lose this as well. So you will also lose part of the design. Some of it will stay and some of it will go. And another trick is I always keep my baby wipes whenever I'm wiping things. If they're really nice, they become kind of like uh, tie dye and then you can keep them for things. So let me just put a little bit of purple here, you see? So that you get purple. And let's go back to my favorite technique, which is to add, oops, hold on, I'm getting a paintbrush. It's to add um, color. So I like once there's water, and you can actually spray water first on your background. You don't have to start with the powder first. So um, for example, if I want like the magenta, which is one of my favorites, I just go like this and and let it like kind of flow. I like um, dipping my paintbrush and kind of working in the edges and letting things kind of work themselves inwards. And then I take my spray and um, and just basically let it run down the design. Now this really gives our beautiful mixed media technique. Uh, 
mixed media like feel and i have a lot of videos where i've used this technique before you can have them on uh, you can watch them on my channel of course and that's another way to learn more techniques now one of my favorite colors and people get like very scared when i use this color even though it's just a blue but I love using dark colors to kind of frame things. So you're gonna see that if I add this color, it makes it like um, very dark. So let me paint, let me just um, add this here and look how dark this color is, but it's just a beautiful blue. Now this is a flat color, but honestly, it's one of my favorites. I use it a lot. It's called Stormy Sky. And it is a flat. So, and when I use it to kind of uh, work things in, it really gives a fantastic effect. Now, oh, thank you so much, Zoe. That's really nice of you. You didn't have to do that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so, just want to say one more thing a really cool thing that you can also do. Okay. Not one more thing. I mean, there's lots of more things, but. This is interesting that you can do as well, okay? And let me show you. I'm gonna make this with like maybe this golden yellow. Okay, so as you can see, you can add like dark color, you can add light colors, like anything goes. But now I'm gonna make my own kind of paint, just watercolor, my own watercolor paint, okay? And let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to, again, grab my little spoon. This is like just a Nuva spoon, but you can use like a little, any type of spoon that you want. And I'm going to put some here. Okay. Now you don't have to put a lot. You can always test it first and see if you need more. And then you can add water to it. Oops, maybe not like that. Maybe put it on the side <laughs> so it doesn't splatter everywhere. Um, and then take your paintbrush and just kind of mix it and you can create your own watercolor. So if it's strong, if it's not, if it's, um, how do you call this? If it's not too strong, you can add more powder. So for example, you can just go and paint with it, okay? So if you don't wanna work directly on your background, you can make your own colors. You can also use, sorry, let me just show you. They're a little bit dirty. So you can also make your own colors in a, a watercolor palette and then, uh create different colors okay i think these are acrylic paints but you can also buy yourself a little palette and make your own colors in this as well so for example i can go in this and use it to create splatters in the background right because that's like something i just love doing um i love creating splatters especially with gold so now i am going to come back to this this one and you see this has basically dried and I can just go and add some splatters and just have fun with it. Obviously these are all designs that um, all these techniques are can be either be combined or done separately. You're like, you can just do anything. And let me show you some of the examples that I've actually, like I actually did previously did uh, before I started this class. So, so that way I could show you, like I could, you know, kind of test things. So look at this one, for example. This was done with like the modeling paste, the same as this, and just added a lot of um, color afterwards. So uh, this is where I painted with the yellow. I did the same thing here where I painted with yellow and kind of went like this and painted. And I can do that in this case as well, right? So you have like a lot of options. You can, you can mix them with water and paint. You can splatter them, you know? You can like see this dark color here? That's the same dark color that I was talking about. I don't even think I put enough here. So let's add some more. Actually, let me show you another flat one. This one is really nice as well. So this is also a really nice one. It's uh, it's called just, it's a cobalt color. And when you use things like, uh, where's my spray? There it is. Um, when you use like sprays like this, it really starts running and I love the drips and like all the designs you can do with it. So um, you can definitely test so many different things with it. Here is the sprays that I tested. This is, um, 
This is another color that I made like the same as this with the modeling paste. I just used teal instead of purple. Um, and what's nice about this one, this is the one with the gel medium. It's pretty shiny because my gel medium was glossy, but you can definitely do it with a matte color as well. So both things work the same way. Um, in terms of like, uh, other, there's so many, as I said, there's so many things you can do with them and there's so many colors. So I would recommend if you're going to start like using these powders, um, the best thing to do is to start with like one set, uh, maybe a color, a few colors that you like the most or buy a few singles and try them out. And then if you see that you like them, you can always use my link again to get that 10%. Uh, or email me if you can uh, or message me if you can't find it and that way you can always buy other ones now one really important thing that is worth to mention is that these powders are uh, are not permanent and but they can be made permanent and what i mean by that is that if for example uh this is this was done in the other previous one but let me just show you okay yeah well i can show you this okay so this has been dried for quite a few days okay uh, but if you apply water to it again, so if I went and sprayed, it won't fully remove it, but you can see that it will uh, reactivate, it will reactivate it and, and it will make it kind of like watercolors, watercolors reactivate again and you see it gets removed, not fully removed, but removed. So to make this permanent, to make this, these colors permanent, you need to uh, you need something to protect them. So you could use something like gel medium on top, right? But that what would happen is that it could move things. You want something that is a little bit um, uh, easier to maneuver. And one of the things I found that is best is distress microglaze or some kind of like waxy material. I think Dorlins makes it as well. So what I do is I put the distress micro. I use um, a dauber. And I just go over the area where, where I put the microglaze. You can do this also with watercolor. And that way you can protect the surface. Now it, this material is a little bit waxy, kind of oily, kind of like Vaseline, but not as greasy. So you do want to let it dry. dry. You don't want it to, um, you have to wait until like it fully dries on top. But this is a great way to protect things, okay? Now, uh, does anybody have any questions? Because I really, um, uh, I'm happy to answer any of the questions if anybody might have. And um, yeah, otherwise, like, I mean, I really hope you enjoyed this. Like, there's just, as I said, let me just go over all the techniques that I did. So that way, maybe somebody can ask a question and in the meantime, I'll just, um go over them so the first thing i did is just test them with water with uh water so in so basically here i tested the boys splattering or spraying or whatever with the fanning with the fan brush it's good to have a cheap fan fan brush um i also kind of use them as watercolors then i added modeling paste onto another panel and let it dry so i could try the different colors onto it I also use them through a spray. I made my own spray out of this and I could use it through the stencil or on its own. So you could just spray above things. So that's another thing you can do. And um, you can also mix them with many different colors and uh, many different things. You can mix them with water, which is makes your own watercolor paint. You can mix them with modeling paste, which is which is the modeling paste hold on oh there it is yeah here you can mix them with modeling paste which i did here and mixed it with purple you can mix it with gel medium and create your own paint or you can just use them as is which is like the powdered you can splatter them you can do basically so many things and there's also so many techniques you can do with them just as uh, the properties of watercolors and a lot of them are the resist techniques that i was talking about before and so just to recap, like the resist technique that I did, that I'm doing in my class um, in the Card Maker Success, Success Summit, I'm gonna be making these backgrounds that you can turn into cards or you can use in your art journal if that's what you do. And 
if you sign up for it, whether it's for the free one or if you upgrade, you actually get this free download. So it's really great because you can then make thank you cards and other things. If you do upgrade to the VIP, which is like when you get all the classes in the summit, um, you can actually, as I said, um, uh, get uh, like extra bonuses as well. And one last thing. As I said, like if you don't have this, uh, if you don't have the magicals and you want to do that class, you can still use things like watercolors and that will help you create um, the same effect with the resist. Obviously you cannot make sprays out of watercolors, not like this, uh, but a lot of the things that you can do, you can use them through, um, you can use them over modeling paste, you can use them uh, over gel medium, you just cannot mix watercolors obviously inside of it. And that's why the powders are so versatile in that sense. Uh, so if you enjoy this and uh, you want to get some of them, as I said, I'm offering uh, like from the, when you press on my link in the description, you get 10% off to buy these powders. And if not, just go and try and experiment and just get a couple or just use watercolors, whatever it is. I hope you really enjoyed this class and that it gave you some, it gave you a lot of ideas to try at home and to try to create no matter what backgrounds or what uh, projects you do. There's a lot of things that you can do, not only with Magicals, but with all the mixed media products that you have at hand. So just go and experiment. It's really, really fun and important to do that. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so glad that I came here and I, I am hoping that I will do this soon again and not just wait so long to do this. Um, but it was so nice seeing everyone that I love here on my channel again. And I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Bye everyone.